Hey, Mitchell, thank you so much for joining me on my show. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, okay, well, you are the founder. You're a partner in Praxis. I, I am COO. COO. Uh, I looked at your website. It's, it's really cool. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and ideas about the, the workshops that you guys are putting in place and how I feel like that like, really fits into our culture. Um, it's something that like, I am excited about. I'm excited to talk to you about that. But before we get into practice, uh, excuse me, Praxis, uh, I like to start by just introducing you. Um, where are you from? Where do you live? Tell me a little bit about your background. Yeah, that's that's probably as good a starting point as any. So um, I'm I'm originally from Oklahoma, small town, Midwest, middle of mm -hmm. nowhere, Oklahoma, and um, I, I now live in Denver, Colorado. But a lot has happened since you know since I left Oklahoma years ago. Yeah. But um, my my personal story to give a little bit of context is, is a really important part of, of what got me to where I am today and, and the work that we're doing at Praxis. And, you know, I was, I was that, that kid who always knew he wanted to leave home. There was something bigger out there. I didn't know what it was, but there was something bigger that, that I, I went out chasing and down, down the road when I got into college, I, I just, going through school was so painful for me. I was a great student, but but when I got into college, everything started to conflict for me. It was like, there's all these cool things going on outside. I got, mm. I got involved working with the startup, was working several other part-time jobs outside of school. And then there was this like classroom world where it was like, follow the rules, complete assignments, show up, do things. And, and as far as I had known up to that point, that was the way to succeed was to you know, get good grades in school and all that. But meanwhile, Outside the classroom, there were all these cool things going on out, outside of it. And it kind of opened my eyes to this, this kind of struggle that I think a lot of young people uh, go through, where it's like, <laughs> should, should I continue to go to, go to school and, and get these credentials, get, get grades, study different things as a way to you know, figure out what I want to do, as a way to, to be, become successful someday? Or should I just go start working on some stuff that interests me? And so... I, I struggled with that for, for several years, got out of college, started working a bunch of different jobs in that pursuit of like something bigger. I knew it was out there. I couldn't articulate it. And, and, and it took quite a few years and, and so many different bad jobs, so many different jobs that I, you know, just were not fun, uh, but were all valuable learning experiences on along the way until I ultimately, you know, came across Praxis and met the founder and he challenged me you know, like, what if I can introduce you to some, some people who are doing really cool work, stuff that it'll give you an opportunity to dive in and, and see entrepreneurship um, in, in real life action, like to get exposure to businesses um, from the inside versus just this theoretical knowledge. I was about two weeks from going back to law school at the time. And I was like, you know what? Why not? I pushed all my chips in the table and that's kind of, that was kind of the jumping off point. That was a, that was several years ago now. Um, and, and I haven't looked back since it was been a great decision, but that, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of making that, that leap into the unknown was, was really what unlocked the, you know, unlocked so many of the answers that I'd been searching for along the way. So anyway, now, now it's an awesome privilege to work with younger people who are trying to figure those things out for themselves. And I'm, I'm excited to talk a little bit more about that today. Yeah, that's brilliant. And so I'm on episode like 80 something of my podcast and I used to really, really kind of prepare for them, you know, because I get all nervous and I want to like yep. say the right thing, but I've, I've found through doing it that one of the best reasons to start with people's stories is because like it's in the story that you usually find the why behind like yep. what they're doing, you know, and it, it kind of segues perfectly because as I was um, introducing you a little bit, like a lot of when I was looking at practice, a lot of the ideas and the things that came to my, my head are, um, it, it seems like some of the conflicting ideas that you had where it, it conflicts with like the standard education society. Yep. Um, you're, you're learning, but, or excuse me, you're being educated, but are you learning? You know, yep. you're, you're going through a process, but are you, are you developing skills? Um, there's, there's just so much, and especially now, um, you know, it's, it's April 11th when we've recorded this. So everybody's been bunkered in the house for like a month now. And it's, it's just showing more and more how important it is to, 
to be able to like apply some of the skills directly into real life situations. And, um, and so I'm, I'm teeing you up a little bit because I, I want to give you an opportunity to, to tell everybody like what Praxis is, how you guys developed these boot camps, and, and I'm hoping that you can um, articulate like how what, what you're doing is you're kind of giving young people, especially like a running start, you know, so that like as they go into the system, they already have some momentum. Yeah, that's that that is a good setup. So so I appreciate it. But sure. um, it, to, the the simplest version, Praxis is a six month boot camp for entrepreneurial young people who are yeah. looking to develop real world skills, get real world experience, and at the end, it results in a full time job, usually at a growing startup. So uh, to 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 dive a little bit more deep, you know, in, deeply into yeah, what do. that entails, we yeah. we try to find. We know that there are a lot of young people out there who college is really not the, the best next step for them. Even if it, it may not even be right ever, but they're, they're looking for, they're looking for something that college really can't provide for them. Yeah. And this isn't to be anti-college or anything like that. It's about helping people facilitate the, the, the best discovery process so that they can start their career strong. So, so that's an exciting part of it is you know, our boot camp helps people get a little bit better context for where their interests and skills are valued in the real world. Mm -hmm. And we help them hone those skills and, and, and fill those gaps between where they are today, where they need to be to be hireable through a six month boot camp. very project based. There are a lot of workshops and on, on the end of it in, in terms of like getting hired, our sweet spot is really like non-technical roles, sales, marketing, customer support operations, roles that are, that are functions in every good business mm -hmm. and all offer really good upside, but you don't need, you know, they're not gated by some four year degree. In most cases, you don't need to go get, you know, an engineering degree or anything like that to, to be successful and build a really strong jumping off point for your career. What, whatever that career, those career aspirations down the road are. So we, we're helping people figure out really strong starting points for their careers and, and, <laughs> and all, also do it better, faster, cheaper than, you know, sitting in class for four years, accumulating thousands, thousands of dollars of student debt. So it's an exciting, it's an exciting thing to be doing. And it's also just really fulfilling to, to be working with people who, you know, they're trying to solve a lot of the problems that, you know, I, yeah. I had all those big questions when I was first starting out too. So. Yeah, man. Uh, okay. So let me dive into this a little bit. What, what are your your personal thoughts on higher education. Have you become anti-college? Have you become, um, I'll, I'll, I'll cushion this for you. I see the value of college. Um, I see more and more that it's just kind of turning into a racket and something is going to change because it's, ine it's inevitable. Like the, the structure itself can't, the system can't support itself. Um, and it's, it's almost a little bit, outdated you know like obviously i want to make sure a brain surgeon goes to college for like 12 years what is it like maybe more <laughs> um but you, you talked about sales and I, I never went to college um i've naturally been gifted i guess with the art of conversation and like i can sell stuff and in, in a lot of ways i always thought that it's the most valuable skill that there is because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how um like how talented you are at a particular craft or, or how skilled you are at something. Like if you can't get somebody to pay you for it, then it's, it's just a hobby. It doesn't matter. You know? It doesn't like, matter. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just a hobby. So, so I'm, I'm always like really appreciative of, of places that talk about the skills that, that directly um, fit into like the modern workforce. Like you said, like, like sales operations, man, like, at tax code how come colleges don't teach tax code you know like <laughs> it blows my mind i don't understand it um so so what are your views on college is this something that like you're intentionally trying to disrupt because you think praxis is a better way or are you just sort of like easing around it a little bit yeah so i i would say my personal views are a little bit more radical than, than, than what our views are and, and what we really care about doing in terms of the business. Like yeah. my, my personal views are, I went to college. I'm, I'm, I am glad looking back that I spent 
so much time and energy in high school, padding my resume, you know, succeeding in the classroom, making top marks on tests. I'm glad that I did that now simply because I, I got, mo I, like I walked out of college with no student debt. I, I wish I would have woken up a little bit earlier yeah. to all the opportunities outside of, outside in the real world that you didn't have to go through college to access. But I'm glad that I at least avoided the student debt that so many other people just, Seriously. that's yeah. their route and they get out and they don't even know what they want to do. And suddenly they have this mortgage hanging over their head that they have to make decisions based on, on these bills that are due. Yeah, and, and you can't default on it. Oh my gosh. It's, that's the part that, that's the part that I struggle most with Me in too. terms of, in terms of college and whether it's yeah, valuable too. or not, I can put that to the side and just, I, the, the question that I care much more about answering is, is this the best way? Is this the most cost effective way to access a really good career? And I don't think it is. I think definitively, I think that people are being duped. I think that the social narrative around college is so strong that most people don't stand a fighting chance. It, it's very difficult to stand up to the social pressure of your family or your friends or just everybody. You know, that's the narrative. You're in high school and it's where are you going to college next year? What are you doing? And the people who escape that, they're treated like social pariahs, the people who don't go. And that's, that's, that's terrible. Uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong. People that go, that's, that's great. I went to college. Most of my friends went and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to go, at least, uh, at least make sure that it's your decision and it's what you want to do and mm. that you're comfortable with the cost that you have to bear as a result of that if, if it's not paid for. If, if, you, if you have to take on student debt, just be comfortable that, that is a, you're not making a four-year decision. You're making, in many cases, a 15, 20-year commitment to, to this thing. And the, the part that, that frustrates me the most is the people who they, they don't even know what, what all is out there in the real world yet. And they go make this, this big 20 year commitment. Mm. And then they're, then they get to the other side. It's, it's difficult to find a job, but they have bills due. So they go take whatever job they can get. And then they start climbing the ladder. And it's, it, it's just this really, really vicious cycle in many cases where, you know, I meet, people in their mid twenties, late twenties, even, even in their thirties. And it's like, I really don't love my job. This, this isn't something I'm passionate about, but you know, I'm, I'm now, I'm now kind of in it. And, and, and the, the later on that, that, that cycle continues, you know, I, I, now I'm married, I have kids, I have a mortgage and I have all these things now and I'm kind of locked in. I'm trapped with, um, you know, the, the term that, uh, one of my my good friends I'm going to steal from him is is the copper handcuffs where I mm. I I'm making I'm making just enough money that it's really difficult for me to go start chasing the thing that I I originally wanted or the thing that I care about and so yeah. what we're trying to do with Praxis is is not necessarily disrupt college or you know get rid of that or whatever but it's it's to give people a, a fighting chance to start their career strong at least a way to go discover what what makes them come alive sooner and do it cheaper to do it um, faster and and hopefully through that experience they they can find the thing that makes them come alive the thing that they're good at the thing that somebody else is willing to pay them money and they never have to go rely on a third-party credential to access that next thing they 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 develop this mindset that whatever they want in life, there's a way to go create the opportunity to access mm. that. And so um, that that's a long way of saying my, <laughs> I, I have a lot of hostility to uh, a lot of hostility to college, but I think there, there are definitely alternatives that, that offer people a, you know, an, as good of an alternative, if not a better in many cases. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I agree with the mindset of it. Um, I'm not, although I, in social standards, some of my views would be considered, you know, quote, radical. I don't, <laughs> I don't see college and my view of college as radical. Like, I'm not trying to shut down the system. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm saying, um, I, I just, I, I believe what you believe, where in a lot of cases, there's better ways. In a lot of cases, there's like way more cost effective ways um, yeah. that'll get you in the same place, if not further along faster for cheaper. And so like, you know, when I was looking at Praxis, that's exactly what I see. 
Um, I see something that can probably get you further along faster for cheaper. Uh, one of the other things that I really liked about it, and uh, this is another little uh, conversation is, okay, so if you don't go to college, what, what's the other like online uh, educational opportunity you see? And it's courses. And so I'm a partner in a website called Copy Blogger. And it's a, a pretty, um, it's, it's like a, a really, it's, it's a great website. And we teach people how to build online businesses through copy, uh, through content marketing. Uh, and through that, um, we sell a lot of educational products. And I've seen through the last 10 years that this idea of like a static course, you know, like buy this thing, start it, do it on your own time, isn't that good of an option either simply because the completion rates on them are so small and i think that that is a problem because one of the things that college does provide that i hear a lot and i completely agree with is just that group think mentality like you learn so much by being around other people and so with copy blogger just giving like a little bit of a parallel what we're trying to do is develop like interactive workshops, so to speak. We're like, yes, we have yep. course material, but it's not just something where like you buy it, here you go. Let me know when you're done. Um, you do it together and you, it, it's an experience. Like we're calling it experiential. And uh, when I look at Praxis, that's what you guys do. It's a boot camp. Like you're providing an actual experience. Um, elaborate on that for me. Yeah. So I think that it goes, I want to back up and, and go to what you said about courses for a second to, yeah. to make this point. And I think that it goes back to like, what is, what is the point of what you're learning? And I think at school, it's, it's very difficult to divorce the, the learning from the grade. And like, like the grade is the metric that you're, you're measured on, whether you learn this yeah. or not. And I think that that's, that's, that is a difficult, that's a difficult, um, starting point whenever you get out in the real world where there's no longer grades assigned there's no longer points for attendance you you are now trying to figure out how how can i convince somebody else that that what i learned i i actually learned beyond just theory i can actually apply this in the real world and it's also a valuable thing to know and that's the part that when we think about praxis it's it's not designed uh, our curriculum and our experience is not designed around facilitating curriculum in a way that that is like complete these assignments because this is what we say. It's much more about let us give you real world exposure to real projects, real types of work that people do in the real world in these real roles. And, and let's help you explore those things so you can discover which areas you really like and also build projects with the express intent of leveraging those to get hired. Like you're building a strong portfolio to manufacture a signal that when a hiring manager or, you know, a, a company or an entrepreneur sees this, they, they see that, that you have some skills. They, they can actually see your skills in, in action and they can see those and, and make the bet, a safer bet that you are someone worth investing in as you know, whether that's, you know, hiring you or, or whatever the case. Cases those being able to showcase your skills opens more opportunities than being able to you know put them on a on a resume and bullet points and that's that's the leap that I care about making and I think that that's the part that I'm really hopeful about the way education and learning can evolve in the future with with technology now where there's there's a much shorter there's a much um, much smaller gap between learning and and market value like like where, where you're learning with the express intent of using that to make money. That's, that's a much better learning environment, I think, mm. than, than competing for this, this signal, this, this grade or this, you know, third party stamp of approval. So that's, that's the part that, you know, we care about a much more real world valuable skill development than, than just completing assignments. And I think that that's an area that frustrates a lot of people with, with traditional education. Uh, I love how you said, what's the point? Like, what are you doing it for? What's the objective here? I, I work with a business coach and uh, it seems like every single one of our sessions is the same thing over and over again, where like I think about all the ideas and like the how and like, what am I going to do and, and all that. And it always comes back to like, what's, what you, like, what's the point? What are you trying to do? And when you answer that, 
at the end and then you work your way backwards, you have like a much, a much quicker and smoother path to getting to your end goal. So uh, as soon as you said that, that really clicked for me, like, what are you doing this for? Stop wasting time with, with anything that's like superfluous on the edges, right? Like yeah. get there. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And when you think about it that way, you know, listening to you say that it just made me think that like, you know, competing for a grade seems kind of like a detour to the end goal, you know? And I, I think that, I think this, this is something I've been, I've been wrestling with my own biases and assumptions lately on is, is why do people even go to college? I think that if you look at Gallup polls or, or the research out there, they say it's to get better jobs, like mm-hmm. a, an overwhelming number of, of students pulled say it's to get better jobs but I don't think that's really the real reason I think that's kind of this justification I think what what people are looking for is is this social experience there's this fear of missing out on a a very a very attractive social experience you can go get plugged in with a lot of people you can go find people who are interested in the same things as you maybe you went, went to high school and you were you know, you felt like an outcast. You didn't feel like your tribe was in high school. And like college is a way, you know, to, to be in one place with a lot of people who, you know, maybe a, a, a higher likelihood that they're shared interests that you can meet people for the first time. Yeah. And there's all the, you know, there's all the other, you know, far more, far more social, you know, <laughs> far, far more social uh, experience as well, you know, like the, the partying and, and all of the, the sports and all of the things that, that people, people want. And I think that, that that's something that people crave. I think that's something people crave. But that it, I don't see that as a good enough justification for the cost or the, the, the lost opportunity to earn experience or whatever. And, and the fact of the matter is like all those superfluous, superfluous detours into <laughs> they, they come at a really high cost once you yeah. actually get out on the other side and you're trying to figure out how to get hired so have you ever seen the ivory tower i don't i don't think I've, i haven't seen that i'm not i watched not it like 10 years ago um it's a documentary about the college bubble basically uh it was really fascinating if anybody wants to watch it, it's called the ivory tower it's pretty short too it's like a, a well done documentary where they got right to the point but uh what you were talking about there um, and this is my last point, because I, I want to hear more about like the ins and outs of, of your business and what you're doing. Yeah. But like they, they were filming these kids that were touring Ohio State. And the first place they brought them to was this like amazing rec center that had like a legitimate huge rock climbing wall. <laughs> and I just saw these kids they were looking at it, like, oh, my God, I want to be here for this experience without understanding that they're paying for that rock climbing wall with their tuition, you know, and Ohio state is, God, I don't even know how much you have to pay to go there. Um, so yeah, I, I do agree that there's this narrative that that time in our lives where we're like young and free, you know, like we Mm -hmm. have to spend that by balling out with these, these (laughs) wild experiences. Um, and like, there's a place for that, you know, like, I don't want to take anybody's youth away, but man, yep. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely grateful that in my 20s, uh, in my early 20s, I decided to, you know, be a business, be a businessman. Yeah. Because now I'm 33. And like, as, as humbly as I can say, um, I, I, I got a great life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't worry about my mortgage, um, plant flowers on the weekend and like me and my wife hang out. And like, if we want to go somewhere we do it and uh and that's like the life that i always wanted to live when i was in my early 20s thinking yep. like i can't wait to get there you know so i just the cost reward um what you were saying like i just i completely agree so okay i'm gonna cut that off <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for for chatting about that with me because yeah. I, I always find yeah. that that conversation really appealing um for Praxis especially, one thing that I want to learn more about, uh, I'm an SEO, basically. Like I grow mm-hmm. my companies through, through search. And your website, it doesn't have like a whole lot of content on it. You basically get right to the point. Like this is our program. This is yep. what we're doing. Um, what, is, what is your guys' marketing scheme? Like how are you getting the word out there? Yeah, so, so we do on, if, if you go, there's a career resources page on the website. And that's where 
most of our content lives. We have, we have so many blog posts. Blogging has, has been a, a big part of our, of our makeup. Like, um, a, a big part of, of our philosophy is, is learning out loud. So we have everyone on our team is, has always been very, you know, very big into putting the things they're working on out there. So, you know, whether that's uh, content I'm sorry, where on the site did you say that was? I want to make sure. There should I be a there. career, career launch resources page on the homepage. Ah, that's your blog. At the top. If you go in there, there's, there's blogs, there's our podcast, there are books we've written, uh, our newsletter, um, all, all sorts of different resources there that, that we are, we're always creating tons of content. So that's, that's always been a huge part of, of our brand because it's, it's sort of that, that leading by example thing as well. Like a lot of our, you know, it, through the, the bootcamp, our participants are creating content, whether it's mm. blogs, you know, blogging is a big part of it, but blogs, projects, all of these things. And it's, it's, it, it's helping people learn the value of putting their work out into the real world as a way of that. manufacturing a stronger signal. And so we, we, that's something we care near, uh, we care a lot about and, and we, we try to lead by example on that. And we're, we're all very big into content creation. Um, beyond that, we have a lot, you know, we, we do some speaking, uh, we come on podcasts, we, you know, we've, we've done our own podcasts as well. Um, a, a big part, uh, you know, we do Facebook advertising, you know, search is, is some, you know, get some attention like SEO yeah. and that, that types of thing. So there are a lot of different things we, we do. And because our team is still small and we're, we're very nimble, we're always rapidly experimenting with new channels and new, oh, new kind of marketing experiments and, and rapidly testing, you know, like let's go run this experiment for 30 days and, and, you know, come up with a strong hypothesis, whether this is, you know, like, like let's try and put a priority score. What, what's our, estimated impact here what's you know how easy is this thing to spin up um what's the our confidence level that this is going to be successful then let's go run that for 30 days 60 days and look at the results if it if it was something that worked let's double down on it if it's something that that didn't work let's go back to the drawing board and see if we can conduct a better experiment or we need to scrap this and do something else so we're always running a lot of stuff beyond the the kind of core channels that we've, we've had a lot of traction in over the years yeah that's really cool what what has been working for you so far? What's working so, best? Yeah, so a, a couple of things that I'm I'm excited about right now that we're doing are you know podcast outreach. So we're we're guest appearing on on a number of podcasts and we're having a lot of really good conversations and and trying to get our our story out in front of yeah. new audiences. So that's that's a big one, and then also um, putting on on sessions. So live info sessions for you know either or website visitors or people that are already, you know, news, newsletter subscribers um, or, or, or student groups. So sure. um, within that vein, there are some student groups and, and kind of segments that, that what we do is already a really natural thing for them. One of those is, is, is homeschoolers. So I'm a homeschooler, I'm about to graduate high school and I'm looking for the next thing. That is a market that we deliver a ton of value for because mm. uh, homeschoolers are already kind of naturally inclined to this idea of self-directed learning experience. And that's yeah. something that, that really plays well as this next step for them, um, for the ones who aren't interested in going to college next. Self-directed learning experience. I love that. Yeah. That really wraps it up. Um, I think that's great. I think the, uh, to touch on that point again, um, so what are they, webinars that you guys are doing where you talk about the... Yep. A just a, a, a few times a month, we'll do info sessions, webinar style, where anybody can come and attend with their questions. And we'll talk a little bit more about praxis and also just, you know, what, what's the best way to go discover, you know, discover what you want to be when you grow up. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about career discovery and, and, and build most of it around you know, our program experience and what it's like too. Yeah. I, I think webinars are obviously a really, really good fit. Like um, webinars are changing. Like I'm an online marketer, you know? So like, yep. I always kind of go back to this spot. I'm really interested in like the schemes and the strategies that people use for different industries. I think you guys obviously have an SEO play because there's going to be yep. a ton of people searching like, what do I do if I don't go to college? Something yeah. like that. Uh, and webinars traditionally have kind of been like 
it's almost sort of, what am I trying to say? Like people are catching on. Like I get that I'm signing yeah. up for this webinar because you're going to give me like an intro. It's not necessarily like an educational webinar. It's just sort of yeah. like a, a little, give me a taste of what it is that you're actually trying to yeah. sell. And in the defense of webinars, sort of speak, I, I, you know, like if you're going to put content out there, you want to try to get a return. Like it's a marketing tool. You want to grow yep. your business and there's nothing wrong with that. But I've, I've, I've found, and I'm optimistic about the idea that, uh, like we talked about before, webinars are becoming less of like a pitch presentation and more of just like a whole interactive experience where people yep. build a network and build community. And so when, when you said that, like, I just noticed that you didn't say webinars and you said, um, interactive, I think In, info session, yeah. yeah, info sessions. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So, and another point on community, this is a, this is a part of what we've been doing. That's a priority and something that I love the most is, is unlike traditional education, higher ed, like we're not aiming for, you know, a let's enroll as many students as possible. You know, we, we are very committed to building a, a high value long-term professional community mm. with our participants and alumni. And that's something that we've been investing in and, and kind of going to continue to invest in. We have a, amazing engagement with our alumni and our participants. They're, you know, digital community, strong digital community where people are, they are the, the things that are happening as a result of, of that online community where people have a place to kind of come come together around their shared interest is, is really cool. Like, like for instance, one of the, one of the groups that's going on, uh, an alumni started this a, a couple of years ago as a sales mastermind. So there are a lot of our participants who, when they graduate, they go get placed in sales roles. They, they start their sales careers. And these are some of the, the best, like rising star salespeople I know. And they, they, they meet on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and just talk about different sales problems they're running into, how to solve them. They brainstorm different tools, like you name it, all the different questions that everybody early in their career in sales has. Like this is a, an awesome community that's kind of sprung out of, of, of our, our uh, community of participants, alumni. And there, there are a lot of different examples, but that's one of my favorite ones. I can tell that. I, I made a decision like two episodes ago to do video. I think we talked about this because people yeah. usually have been uncomfortable with video, but I think everyone's getting more comfortable with it now. Um, and I really like it because if anybody's watching this interview on video, like you can see that when you talk about the community and you talk about the alumni and like the development of your, your customers or clients or, or whatever you call them from coming into the boot camp to like leaving and being introduced into the workforce like your face you get really excited about it. I can tell you're passionate and I think that's really cool yeah yeah I mean it's 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 the rewarding work that I I was looking for for that so many years do, right yeah yeah uh that is really exciting um I'm happy that we finally got a chance to have this conversation um the last week we had to kind of bail on the podcast twice. And last night I think I messaged you. I was like, yo man, can you do tomorrow morning? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, do and, it. I'm, and I'm really glad that we did. I, I want to wrap up with, um, with some questions about the other side, because I think this is always important to talk about. And mm -hmm. I, I like hearing people open up about this. Like what have been some of the challenges with it? Um, it's, it's always easy to talk about like your business and your product, and your ideas and how good it's going. But, uh, there's always pushback of some kind. Have some of the challenges been um, like from a method, uh, uh, like, a, like an ethos standpoint? Are people just telling you like, no, this isn't the route, you shouldn't be promoting this? Have some of the challenges been straight, you know, like acquisition and sales? What, what's been some of the hard stuff? Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about two challenges. One is more of a personal thing that, that I run into in, in with our business. And the other one is, is, a, a very, very much a business branding, messaging, product problem. Let's talk about that one first. And that's, that's the acceptance. So <laughs> we're still in the early innings. Praxis, you know, we're, our first class was in 2014. And, you know, we've had hundreds of participants since then. But we're still in the very early innings of an alternative route to your career alternative to college. We're still in the very early innings. This, the social narrative around college is very strong still. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's always, there are some pockets of the market, like I said, like homeschoolers or, or people who are already, have already made the decision they're not going to college or they've dropped out of college. 
we, we deliver incredible value for them. But we're, there are always these conversations where we're running to somebody who's on the cusp of going to college or, you know, they're in college and they know that they're not happy, but making that decision to opt out is a very difficult thing. It's not just a personal decision. In many cases, it's a decision that, that you have to accept. You have to accept the disapproval of your family, of your friends, of other people that, that they're just not familiar with an alternative. Yeah. And that can be a very difficult thing for an 18 to 25 year old, you know, person that's, that's still trying to figure it out because it's very difficult to go tell people, I don't know what I want to do, but I'm not going to go this route that I've, I've decided is not right. That's, it's, it's very difficult to not have a plan and sell that to other people in your life. So that's something we're always trying to, we're always trying to guide people through that decision-making process. I'm not going to, you know, I don't, by no means do I want to say, Hey, Praxis is right for everybody. It's not, it's yeah, definitely not. Either. It's not. Yeah. But I want to, I want to offer a soft landing for people because I know how big of a leap it was for me to make whenever I decided not two weeks before law school to go this route instead. And so I, I want to be a sounding board and, and challenge people to think critically for themselves versus trying to convince them that what we're doing is right for them. That's a, that's some, something people have to derive at, 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 you know, on their own, on their own accord. Yeah. So that, that's a big one. The, okay, so uh, that's, that's the first one. There's like a sunk cost fallacy in there yeah. too, right? Because you're, I'm already two years in, you know, but like, what are you going to get out of another two years of something that you don't want? And that's like a real Absolutely. psychological thing. That whole sunk cost, I'm, I'm, I'm really into that. I, I see it everywhere. And I think to myself, like, why is that so hard for us just to yeah. feel like we well, already spent money? So I know. It's not worth it. Let me go double my losses now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Let me double my <laughs> losses. Um, okay, so that's, that's the first challenge. And then you mentioned that one was a little bit more like um, just uh, uh, personal or, or in the yep. business. Yeah. So this other one, it's, it's a business challenge, but it's, it's more of a personal one. And I think that this is, I, I imagine a lot of businesses come, come to this and it's, it's, it's what do we want our business to become? Yeah. And there's this, this ebb and flow. When I look at other programs out there that are, that are trying to solve problems in a similar space, or I look at out, you know, what, what colleges are doing. And there's this, there's this almost like, sense of impatience, just dissatisfaction with the state of our business. I always want to be better. I always want to be, you know, two years ahead of where we are. Mm. And I look out into the world and I see these other businesses and a lot of them, I get the sense that they want to grow fast. They want to, they want to build this massively scalable thing. And I'm always at odds with whether that's really what we want to do, or if we want to just focus on quality. And if growth happens, that's, that's awesome, but it's, it's rub between quantity and quality. And I, I, I truly believe that the, the real value in what we're doing is in building a strong community and in building something that it is a high quality experience for everyone, even if the, the route that they're taking through our boot camp is a little bit different. It's a little bit customized. I have no interest in being a one size fits all solution for people. Mm. And sometimes it's a very difficult personal struggle when I think right. about where we are and, and where we could be if we, if we backed off from quality and just said, Hey, how could we get, you know, how could we double, you know, double enrollment over the next nine months? Like, yeah, we just let anybody into the program. So it, it's always this rub between how do we, how do we grow without compromising the things that matter most to us? I really relate to that, man. My, uh, my, my marketing agency, most people who listen to me know my story, but we specialize with, with healthcare industries, like yep. mostly behavioral health. And, uh, and yeah, like, God, it's, we've been open for eight years, you know? So like we're an established business and especially within the field. And I can't tell you how many times we've sat around and be like, look, if we kind of take this thing and we just productize it and we just make a template, like I, I think we could probably triple. And there's been times where we did that and then all of a sudden you have, you know, 14 people working for you and you got HR and health insurance is always a pain in the ass and clients sending you emails all the time <laughs> when like, um, when, cause they tell you, right. Like customization is the enemy of scale. You know, yeah. if you can just have one thing and 
pump it out as many times as possible. But at the same time, I, I really go back and forth because there's like, there's the art of the customization and like the art of yeah. serving a client, you know, and like building a relationship with them and like knowing who they are um, that I personally enjoy a lot. So like we've been doing it long enough. We've, we've hit a pretty good middle ground, you know, like we're, we're fine. Um, but that battle it never goes away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. you're always thinking like, should we do it this way? Should we do it that way? There's these other people over there that are seeming like they're having success, but then you don't know because you find out yeah. that their business is actually like upside down. You know, it's, it's a, yeah. I get it, man, that mental battle. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really important to just, I think to, to, to sit back and, and reflect, like do kind of this internal checkpoint and, yeah. and, and try and remind yourself that, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. You don't know, you don't know. know their backstory. You don't really know all the facts and like figure out a way to be comfortable with what you're doing and confident in the decisions you're making. Even if they end up being wrong, like you got to be confident and cut yourself some slack that, that we're all learning. And if you're building a business that it didn't exist before, this is a new thing. It's a different business. There is no playbook. And so you're going to make mistakes and you have to, you have to figure out a way to, you know, make those mistakes with confidence and, uh, and take them in stride. Yeah. So then last question, man, I really appreciate your time. This is an awesome conversation. Like how, how are you doing that? H how are you catching yourself when you're, you know, comparing praxis to other people? Are you just reminding you? My thing is I remember like, where am I right now? I have a big thing of just mm -hmm. like being in the moment. Uh, and I just, I've talked to so many people over the years, everybody struggles with this. You know, you look at what other people are doing and you think for some reason that because they're not you, they're doing it better. So like, what is your, your way of, of dealing with that, uh, that comparison? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably first and foremost is like just being too hard on myself is, yeah. is you know, I think like anybody who, who steps into the ring as an entrepreneur is probably prone to, to being really critical with, mm -hmm. you know, your business and, and the way you're making decisions. So that's part of it is like, you got to go through the emotional roller coaster a little bit. And then I think you got to figure out how to, how to manage those emotions. So a, a thing that I do a lot is journal. I journal a ton. I yeah, try and too. get down my thoughts and the, the things that I feel like are going right. The things that I, I feel like are going wrong. And then also like trying to be trying to build systems or processes that allow you to be brutally honest and objective with how you're doing. And, and so that's, when I think about let's, let's talk about like marketing or growth or sales or whatever is like, if, if you, if you can objectify the metrics you're trying to hit and make those really black and white, it makes it a little bit easier to, to quantify whether you're making progress or not. Mm -hmm. And, and, and those metrics are based on your business's performance, not everybody else's. Not everyone so like else's measure, stuff. measure yourself against yourself and just try, try and make sure you're making progress. And, and, put that into terms of like, what are, what are the goals of the company? You know, if, if uh, you know, you're trying to make, you know, a 10% improvement every month, like if you're doing that, you're doing great. You're doing what you need to be doing for your business. And, and so, um, you know, the term that I like to use is like, get your own yardstick. You yeah. gotta, you gotta find a way to measure yourself according to your, your own standard of, uh, you know, or your own units, I guess. So that's, uh, it's always a struggle though. So yeah, I love that, man. I guarantee people are really going to relate to that. Uh, Mitch, thank you one more time so much for jumping on last minute, making this happen with me. I really, really enjoyed talking with you. Um, I, I hope we stay in touch. I think we have a lot of common. And uh, last but not least, um, we mentioned Praxis a million times. We never mentioned the website. Where can people learn more about you? Uh, how can they get in touch with you? How can they inquire more about Praxis itself? Yeah, I, I appreciate it as well. This has been a blast. Um, if, if anybody's interested in learning more, visit discoverpraxis.com or shoot me an email at mitchell at discoverpraxis.com. Always happy to talk. Cool. And that will all be in the show notes of, uh, Sounds good. of the post as well. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a rating on iTunes. It's the best thing you can do to support my show. Mitch, one more time, man. It was a real pleasure. We'll do this again. Yeah, you bet. See ya.